Okay, so in the previous lesson, we went through an example of economic order quantity, and uh, so we tried to apply that where we have like a commodity, something that sells consistently over time. It's consistent, very stable, and we can replenish that inventory very quickly at a very low level of zero. But the reality is a lot of things aren't necessarily commodities. And you have some inventory items that are quite seasonal and very volatile and fluctuate quite a bit during the year. And it's hard to get your arms wrapped around it. So the EOQ, Economic Order Quantity Model, just doesn't fit. So what do you do? What do you do? And remember what I said in the previous lesson. There's two things you really absolutely positively better measure. And that's the demand for your product and the unit cost. So regardless, regardless of how, whatever model or whatever technique you use, you've got to measure the, the demand. Remember, I said this is demand driven. You've got to measure the demand for every product that you sell. And you've got to measure that unit cost. And in the previous lesson, I also noted that it's, it's a good idea to try to measure holding cost and order cost. And then you can also get your arms wrapped around trying to control all the inventory costs. We're trying to reduce and control the cost, regardless of whether this EOQ model works or not. So if it doesn't work, then try to figure out at what level of inventory do I actually need to go out and replenish and restock the inventory so that I meet the demand for that particular inventory item? So what you can do is you would want to measure, in order to do that, you're going to have to know exactly how much lead time there is. Lead time is the time it takes to actually place the order, get the inventory restocked. They, you may have to inspect it. You may have to store it, look at it. You have to swipe it into the inventory control system. So you got to take into account all that time to get it back replenished on the shelf so the customer can actually buy it. So all of that time has to be figured out and measured. So you're going to have to measure this lead time. You may have to normalize the data a little bit which means basically sometimes since we're dealing with a lot of fluctuations in demand, you may have some uh, what's called outlier data, which means you had something, that, an unusual order by a customer, or uh, uh, maybe there was a disaster or a weather event or something that was unusual outside the norm that causes some real spikes in the data. So you may want to analyze the data over a long period of time and get rid of the anomalies or the outliers so you can get some kind of normalization as to what your demand is. Again, we're trying to measure demand. Real, real important to measure the demand. So you may end up having to normalize the data because we're dealing now with very fluctuating data, not constant. And once you figure that out, if you can get to that point, then you want to get this down to the number of days involved. So we want to figure out demand. So once we normalize the data and we think we've got the outliers and the anomalies out of there, and we can figure out what our demand or usage is for each per day, per day. How much, how many units do we expect to sell per day? How much, uh, if we're doing a manufacturing operation, how much usage of materials do we use per day? And then we measure the lead time. So if we know the lead time, we've measured the lead time, and we can take the demand per day times the lead time, and that's going to give us what that reorder level is. So at what level of inventory we wheedle, as people start to buy and buy and buy, and it comes down and comes down, at what level do I trigger a reorder to replenish that inventory item? And that's what we're trying to figure out. Well, what exactly is the reorder level in units? It's the demand per day times the lead time to replenish the inventory item. So if we were trying to sell, like, this is, if we were at a hardware store, let's say, and we were selling garden hoses, garden hoses is not going to be sold uniformly throughout the year. Obviously, it's going to be a fluctuating item. It will probably, you know, it's going to sell really well, real, real well in April and May. In the spring, we sell a lot of garden hoses in our hardware store. In fact, we sell 500 per month in the months of April and May, and that's what we basically see every year. 
And in the typical month in April and May, the store will be open 20 working days. So we want to get down to days. We want to get down to days to measure this. So you've got to know exactly down how many days are we talking about in terms of the usage or the demand for that particular time period that we're talking about. So we're measuring a month, 500, 20 days. So daily demand, daily demand, try and get down to days. 500 divided by 20 is 25 per day. That means 25 garden hoses we can expect to sell in the months of April and May in the hardware store. And we know that when we place the order, <clears throat> the time that we place the order, fill it out, the truck drops it off, we swipe it and scan it into the inventory system. We make sure there's no damage or crinkled up uh, units of hoses. And then we, the stock clerk puts it onto the shelf maybe the following day. We add all those days up and it's six days. <clears throat> so 25 times six is 150 units. So when we get, when our inventory level gets down to 150, that's when we need to go out and place an order to replenish the garden hoses in the hardware store. So this is something you can do if you can't use the EOQ model, and this is something you definitely should consider doing to make sure you order at the right time to replenish the inventory so you meet demand and you minimize your cost.